We going? Thank you. All right, everybody. Welcome to Saturday Night Thunder here at the Ground Town. How are you doing this evening? Awesome. We're so happy you're with us tonight. We're going to do some worship. If you would like to stand, that's cool. If not, that is cool, too. We're just glad you're with us. And God bless you guys. Hello. Good Saturday night, folks. Praise God. I would just like to start this off in some prayer. So um, bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to come worship you, Lord God. We just hope that that is uh, pleasant to your ears, Heavenly Father. That's all we're trying to do. We just want to put our whole hearts and everything we've got into this. And we're so happy that, that you're allowing us to do this, Lord God. So we just uh, here to worship you and sing your praises. And we just thank you so much for your son, Jesus. And we just love you and need you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, sing this praise. As cruel as a grave, shame is a robber. He's called to take my name. Oh, love is my redeemer. Lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song is found.
Good job. Okay, we're doing it. There we go. Have a seat. Lay down. Good boy. She's walking too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll be there for a minute. just about coming back to the Lord when you've kind of turned your back on him for a little bit as we sometimes do this song is all about coming back and getting back in his graces
song that we do, it's, uh, we like to do it because it's who we are. We're just up here with nobody's trying to, to tell everybody about somebody that's uh, saved our soul, you know. Um, we're all miracles up here. We're all, shouldn't be here. There's not one of us on the stage that should actually still be alive right now. So every time we wake up in the morning, that's just a miracle in itself. And, you know, we just thank God for that. And we just want to tell everybody about that uh, loving Father who can't save you as well. So, Amen. Oh, nobody.
you won't care, it's not a big deal to you, but for me it was. And uh, I didn't think, it, it, it's so far-fetched, it's so hard to get there, but it happened. And it was, it was really, really a great day. And, uh, and, so, uh, and I encourage you to wait, pray, it, it might just happen. Stay out of his way. Stay out of, thank you, Boots, stay out of his way. Ladies and gentlemen, without a further ado, I'm going to move this down. Is that, is that good? Hold on. I don't, I don't know if we can lower Do we need to lower this? No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put those hands together for your pastor and my pastor, Rod. Why? Praise God! Hallelujah! perfect for you. See? I win the slow drag contest on Tuesday. This man now knows to put this down for me. We were all having fun. Who reigns as the champion? We were all having fun, and now you've got to do that. Amen. <laughs> you know, but I did win. I did win, so you know, I'm, I'm gonna brag about it this month. Because because the kid is the VP of the Sons of Thunder. He'll probably be here next month, and there's no way I can beat that guy. So I had to wait till that guy went to Hawaii. So I can win. Broke out a sportster. <laughs> Wasn't even mine. Just asked the guy for the keys. Didn't didn't question me. And I jumped on the sportster and won. So I didn't even win on my bike. You know, let me pray real quick. Lord, I just lift up this service right now, Lord. I just ask the Holy Spirit. Just teach us. And I just want to praise the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. school, man. I love that old school stuff. You know, so I'm on Facebook this morning. And you know how they got that, like what happened a year ago? Stuff. Memory, Memory stuff. Yeah. What did you do? Man, yeah, so a year ago, today, my brothers followed me my wife arranged it. And they all followed me to the hospital. I had a motorcycle escort take me to the hospital so I could get my neck surgery. I had gotten in a couple motorcycle accidents, broke my neck and crushed my spinal cord. And they needed to go in there and do whatever they had to do to fix it. You know? That was a year ago. You know? And, and I'm standing right here. You know, and, um, and you know, I'm blessed to be alive today, man. You know, I'm blessed that God still uses me. You know, I'm blessed for this church. You know, because as churches go, I'm going to brag on the garage tonight a little bit. Matter of fact, this whole message is about the garage. It's not about me. It's about all you guys. You know, because Paul... When he wrote letters about churches or two churches, he always kind of wrote what they was doing wrong, not what they were doing right. You know? And uh, this church does church right. Ow! And it just makes my heart happy that I belong to a church and I get to minister at a church that does church right. You know, and um, I'm going to break into the word right now. And um, and so Paul, who was good at writing letters and telling churches, as I said, what they were doing wrong. But he writes a letter to the this particular church, the Thessalonians. And he writes a letter to them. And mind you, I'm going to give you a little backstory on this. That Paul, when he was training this church up, he only had three Sabbath days with, with them to train them up, to get church right, the way he wanted church to be run. Because he had, that's what he was doing. He was out technically planting churches. And so he had three Sundays with these people. And which isn't a long time. He kind of had to run out of town because probably went to the 
lasted very long. We stayed much longer because they were out to get them. And um, so he later writes this letter to them. And it's just kind of amazing to me when I read this this week how he was talking about my church. And it was heartfelt that he would write about a church way back then and it kind of fits what we do here. He's talking about my church, this church, our church. You know? Where was Paul when he wrote it? I don't know where he was at. He was in the <laughs> joint, bro. Oh, that's right. He was in the joint. Yeah, he was in prison, right? Reading right. from the hole. Yeah. <laughs> and so he writes this letter. And um, it goes like this. Paul and Salinas and Timothy go to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you making mention of you in our prayers, consistently bearing our mind your work of faith and your labor of love and the steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the presence of our God and our Father. I'm going to stop there because this is what I'm talking about. Labor of love. This is the first key point that I read in this, and it spoke about this church. A labor of love. That's ministry. You know, that's service. You know, this pastor here, a year ago, was broke. I mean, broke. My neck was like jacked up, came out of surgery, didn't even know if I was going to walk again, didn't even know if my hands were going to work again. But you know what this little church was doing? And we'd only been together a couple months. But you know what this little church was doing? They were serving. Amen. Ow. They were doing business. They were taking care of this church, even though it was new. They rose to the occasion. They did the labor of love. That's what Paul was talking about. This church was doing it right. They, were, they didn't have to wait on me to show back up. They didn't have to do any of that, but they did. Amen. They started doing ministry. They continued doing the do. This church didn't close down. It could have. Pastor's gone. Pastor's out. He's broke. He's in the hospital. This was during COVID. I wasn't even, my wife wasn't even allowed to talk to me or see me. I come out of surgery. I couldn't even use the phone because my hands didn't work. I was paralyzed from the neck down when I came out of surgery. I couldn't contact anybody. But you know what this church was doing? Doing church. Amen. They were doing it. All I could do was pray. And that's what I was doing. I was just praying. Because that's all I had. I couldn't move my hands. I couldn't move my legs. I couldn't move my feet. And I was in so much pain, I couldn't even deal with it. But you know what I was praying? For this church. And that's what I did. And it's just amazing to me that this, you guys out here that sit out here and work at this church and they do the things that they do, do it out of love. Amen. We don't have any money. We're, we don't have that. We're just this little itty bitty church doing labors of love. And here it is a year later, what are we doing? Opening up a recovery center upstairs. How do we do that stuff? Because we do God's work. Amen. We haven't stopped. Amen. You know? And we're not going to stop. Amen. Because that's this church. I'm not talking about anybody else's church. I'm not, I'm not complaining about anybody else's church. I'm talking about my church. I'm talking about the church that I get to pass over. Pastor over. This is the church I'm talking about. Because I love you guys. You know, I love you guys. Love Knowing, you. brethren, the love of God, his choice of you. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in the power of the Holy Spirit. And with full conviction, just as you know what kind of men 
we proved to be among you and for your sake. You all became imitators of us and the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation and joy and the Holy Spirit. What did this church? This church is filled with Christians. This church is filled with believers. Amen. And they're steadfast in their beliefs. Amen. We are a Christian church. We understand the concept of being a Christian and we live it. Amen. That's who this church is. We are a church of believers. And what do we do? We give labors, labors of love. Amen. So we hold that to us. We're not just a bunch of guys out here that think we're safe. We know we're safe. Amen. You know? We know who we are in the kingdom. And what is our mission? To spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what this church does. That's what this church is about. And that makes my heart so happy. That's Brent's phone. Oh, that's somebody's phone. You want me to answer it? No. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Did I get a message? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so that you became an example of all believers of Macedonia and Achaia. But you know what? I'm going to change the words of that so that we became examples to all believers in Huntington Beach, Westminster, and all of Orange County. That's who this church is. We are believers and everybody knows that. But Rod, how do you know that? Man, they're writing articles about this church. Ow! We had an article written in um, a magazine for the Southern Baptist Convention. They wrote about this little itty bitty church. Not, not Rick Warren's church. We're so all Southern Baptists here. But they wrote a little article about this little church. We're on we're on the on the no now. Everybody in this country in the Southern Baptist Convention is reading about us, knows about us, and they're at, and they're bragging about us. So this pastor needs to brag about this congregation. Amen. Why? Because we're full of love. Amen. Amen. We have Jesus in our heart and we know it. Man, that just makes my heart happy that they, you know. I get, a, I get a call from a reporter and wants to like write about this little itty bitty church and what we're doing. What we're doing. Not what I'm doing, what you guys are doing. Amen. It's what you guys do. It's about your hearts. It's about your love. It's about your convictions and how you want to reach the community. Just like this church wanted to reach the community and people knew about it. But you know what? In Huntington Beach, we're known. In Westminster, we're known. In Orange County, they know about us. The Southern Baptist Convention has wrote about us. This church is doing church. And we're doing church the right way. We're doing it because we love God. Amen. Amen. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also everywhere. Your faith toward God has gone forth so that we need not, we, we have no need to say anything. This church doesn't have to say a word. People are talking about us. We don't have to go out and brag on the streets. People are talking about this church, this little itty bitty church. We're talking about the way we're doing it. We're doing it the way God wants us to do it. And we haven't stopped doing it that way. Because we all have a labor of love in us. It's about service. It's about love. It's about Jesus. We're doing it that way. We're not a church with a bunch of money. We're not a big old congregation of, 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 of 2,000 or whatever. We're doing church with a few people, but we're doing it. And I see you guys. They know us by the love that we have for each other because we love each other. We care about each other, and we're just going to continue to do what we do. Glorify God. Amen. Amen. For the word of the Lord sounded forth from you, and not only to, Matt, not only to Huntington Beach, 
and Westminster and all parts of others, but also every place where your faith toward God has gone forth so that you have no need to say anything for they themselves report to us what kind of reception we had had with you and how it has turned to God from idols to serving a living and true God. That's what we do here. We serve a living and true God. That's what this church does. That's what we're about. And we're not going to stop. We have not yet to stop. I have no idea what's next in the horizon, but the garage, this little church, is setting forth to do it because the Holy Spirit will lead us to the next thing. And we're going to be ready, armed up, and to go because I have people here that want to do God's work. This, again, this isn't about Pastor Rock. This isn't about Pastor Chris. This isn't about any of that. It's about you guys. You're saved, and you know you're saved. And you have hearts of servants, and you're steadfast in that. And I know that. Because whenever I ask something of somebody, they don't complain, they don't murmur, they just jump up and they do it. I don't, half the time, I just show up here thinking I need to do something on my own, and it's already done. Amen. That's what kind of church the garage is. People just show up and do stuff. Glory to God. You know, glory to God. Amen on that one. For the what kind of reception you had with you and how he turned to God from idols and served the living and true God and wait for his son from heaven, whom he is raised from the dead. That is Jesus who rescues us from the wrath to come. And that ends that chapter. And that's what we're doing. We're going to work until Jesus comes and gets us. And I know that about this congregation. I know that about these people. Because this is this church. And this is how this church lives. And this is how this church is going to be. And it has nothing to do with this pastor. It's you guys. I see it in your hearts. I see the way you act. I see the love. I see all of that. And I'm just up here as a pastor thanking you guys. And just loving on you guys and bragging on you guys. Because I can't. Because I know your hearts and I know what you're all about. You know, and I'm going to close this, this last scripture here. I'm not going to go myself. So I wanted to read it in the King James Version. I'm not reading from the King James Version. Yea, I will. Actually, I'm reading from Jeremiah 32, 41. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will plant them in this land assuredly with the whole heart and with the whole soul, with my whole soul. This is God talking about us. He rejoices in what we're doing. He rejoices in us. He rejoices in the good that we're doing. He is surely, a, he knows our hearts. He loves us. And he is smiling in the heavens because of what we do. And I just want to leave you with that, that God is happy with you guys. Amen. All right. Thank you, Pastor Rock. So I want to give a special thank you to, uh, to our new sound guy. I was told not to call him Jason, but to call him uh, Jesse. Jesse. I knew his name wasn't Jason, but I think Will thought I said Jason. Because the band was rocking too loud and too hard. So, before we leave, we always like to give everyone an opportunity to come to the Lord. If you haven't already, it's a very simple prayer that we do. You can do it in your head. You can do it out loud. Any way that you like. As long as you do it. So here we go. You can repeat after me. Lord, I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. Lord, I believe you died on the cross and rose three days later. Lord, I turn from my sin and I head toward you. I follow the path you have before me. In Jesus' name, amen. Give those people a round of applause. We'll be back here Tuesday at 6.30. Enjoy the rest of uh, worship tonight and 
Come on, Hey, man. We've got a couple more songs for you. We'd like to hang out for a few. Um, we're just thank Jesus once again for letting us be up here and, 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 and doing his service, or being a service for him and doing his bidding. That's why we're still alive. So uh, all glory to God.
really just lets us know that we got a loving Father that just loves us no matter what we've done, no matter what we, we think we're unforgivable for. It just ain't the case. You know, he's, he's never left our side. Nothing can separate us from him. And so this is all no matter what.
is about just wanting to climb the mountain, climb on your rooftop and just shout out your love for Jesus and, 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 and just cry out to him. So this one's called uh, Rooftop. He's got it. He's right. That's right. That's right. Ready? Thank you. 